Welcome to International Headquarters for the Nation of Yahweh, the Nation of Israel, the Tribe of Judah. Welcome where you will learn our true history, the true history of the so-called black man of America, the fact that we do have a nationality. We learn the reality that color is not a nationality. We have learned that Negro is not a nationality. There is no Negro land. There is no colored land. Our people do not speak colored East. There is no mark on the map for colored land. We don't have colored names. We learn the reality that we don't speak Negro East. There are no Negro names. There's no Negro land. And our people in their search for identity, having suffered from an identity crisis, we then gave up those appellations and took on blackness. But to our shock and horror by us raising the question, I raised the question after we were hollering, black is beautiful. Where is black land? Which of you have black names? Who speaks? Black East, where is your identity? I am the only one that has come to make clear to us that we are the people of the Bible. We are the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that has been hidden from us. We are that prodigal son. We are that lost sheep. We are the ones who've been without the knowledge of our history, culture, language, name, and land. And the reality that our nationality is Hebrew Israelite. We do have a place in the sun. We are not relegated to the bottom of civilization forever. We are that stone that the builders of civilization has rejected. And I'm here to make sure we are the head. No longer will we be the tail, but we are to become the head. And Yahweh, the creator, is the only one that can make it happen. And I'm here to ensure that it takes place. And no devil on the earth, beneath the earth, or in the heavens can prevent what I'm here to accomplish. <laughs> Salvation. Praise Yahweh. I just want to testify to you who Yahweh is. <laughs> Yahweh is the God of heaven. When you read in your Bible and you do your research on this name, you discover that even your dictionaries and encyclopedias teach you that the name Yahweh is the covenant, the covenant, the agreed upon, the historical name of the God of Israel. Many people say in the name of the Father, but they never tell you what his name is. Father is not a name, Father is a title. And it is the express manifest duty of the Son of God to make the world to know who, whom his, who his Father is. That's the job of the son. And when we read the scriptures, we find that that is exactly the manifest job of the son to make the father's name manifest. Matthew what? Matthew eleven twenty-seven. 27. All things are delivered unto me of my father, Yahweh. And no man knows the son but the father. No man knows the Son but the Father. A lot of people say they know the Son. But the book says no man knows the Son. No man knows the Son. That means all men who claim they know the Son are lying. They've never seen the Son. The Son has never visited them. And the Son has never talked to them. They are liars. The book says no man knows the Son. But the Father. Neither know of any man the Father. But the Son.
So you don't hear people today running around talking about the Father because they know they don't know it. They only claim to know the Son. And they don't know him. According to this book. And the only way you're going to know the Father is for the Son to reveal him. You can't know Yahweh unless I reveal him to you. And that is his name. And you can't know who I am unless my Father Yahweh revealed to you who I am. Otherwise, I look just like a man to you. Oh, glory. You're talking about the name. People are baptized with the words in the name of the Father. And never tell his name. Are they ashamed of the Father's name? Or do they know it? It's in your dictionary. It's in your encyclopedia. It's in Bible dictionaries. It is known that the God of Israel has a name. It is known that the God of Israel has a name. Psalms 68.4 Oh, he has a name. You can't go to heaven not knowing the name. That's for sure. Read. Sing unto Yahweh. Sing praises to his name. Sing praises to his what? Name. His name. Yes. Extol him that writeth upon the heavens by his name, Yahweh. Now, when you look up that short form, J-A-H, you find out, first of all, you have to address the reality that the Bible is a Hebrew book. Yes, the patriarchal father, Abraham, Genesis 14, 13, read. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew. Abraham was a Hebrew, the grandfather of the son was a Hebrew, the grandfather of David was a Hebrew, Isaac's father was a Hebrew, Jacob's father was a Hebrew. The twelve sons of Jacob were Hebrews. They spoke the Hebrew language. Now since Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are all Hebrews, their descendants are Hebrews. And 1900 years ago, the people of Israel spoke Hebrew. And guess what? To this very day, this minute, all of you etymologists, all to all of you linguists, to all of you historical researchers, I challenge you to find in the Hebrew language the letter J. It does not exist. There is no letter J in the Hebrew language until this very moment. Therefore, there has never been a Jeremiah. His name was Yermiyahu. There has never been a Joshua. His name was Yahshua. There's never been a John. His name was Jokanah. And there was never a man named Jesus. That was, his name was Yahshua. Then you're safe. I challenge you. Praise God. I don't say this out of anger. I say this out of enlightenment. I, I had to clarify his name. See, 
I defend my father's name because I come in his name. I can't be his son and have a different name from my father. Nobody on earth will receive a man in the name of another man and claim him to be the father. If your name is Davis, you don't claim Johnson for your father. Khrushchev does not claim, claim Li Wong as his father. <laughs> Pierre does not, though the language is still romantic, accept Suarez as his father. That's universal. If that is a universal experience, then how could, be, how could God be less intelligent and send his son with a name different from him? That's why people don't deal with the name. Because you have to explain that incongruence. It's only logical that the father and the son have the same name. John 5, 43. I'm clearing up that job business in Psalm 68.4. Don't you run around here insulting me talking about job. Don't, don't you do it. That's why in, in the book it says, in Exodus it says, by my name Jehovah was I not known. Nobody know about no Jehovah. That's a lie. Jehovah never exists. It's an erroneous name, a lie and a distortion of the name Yahweh. Do your research. Don't follow me behind emotions. I'm emotional about Yahweh, but I don't challenge your emotions. I challenge your intellect. <laughs> Praise Yahweh. John 5, 43. I am come in my Father's name. And he has a name, and his name is Yahweh. This is me. Oh, what, what are you saying? You're Jesus? No. Just told you there's no Jesus. <laughs> Just told you that. That's not his name. What's my name? Yahweh bin Yahweh. What's my father's name? Yahweh. And I'm come in his name. That's who I am. And you receive me not. So I knew when I came in my father's name, I wouldn't be received. Written, I wouldn't be received. Isn't that something? To come knowing that I would not be received. And I come anyway. I came to Miami alone. Without one follower. Rejected. Despised. Spit on. Door slammed in my face. Literature torn up, thrown on the ground. That happened to me. And I spoke just as bravely and courageously when two of you came as I do now. I don't speak more bravely now than I did in the beginning. I told you then that I am going to conquer the entire planet Earth from right here in Miami. I'm nationwide and I'm international. In less than seven years. And I shall continue until the earth is full of the knowledge of Yahweh. Because I'm come in my Father's name. And because you don't receive me, it doesn't make any difference. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe when you only honor one another and you seek to receive honor one of another? I don't seek the honor from any man. I'm honored, but I don't seek honor. My father is enough to honor me. You seek not the honor which comes from God. See, it, those who don't honor Yahweh, they seek each other's honor. They look for that. 
you know, and they have long, you know how it is, long tables with each other. They stand up for an hour giving out accolades of each other, how great and wonderful he is and how many degrees that he has, et cetera. I just come on talking about Yahweh. How many degrees I have is irrelevant. The schools that I attended are all irrelevant, totally irrelevant, totally, completely irrelevant. If it were relevant, then the schools would be turning out men just like me, producing the good works that I produce in lifting up our people across America. But there is not an academic institution in America and not an academician who has been able to produce another one like me. There's not a church that has been able to produce another one like me. There's not a theologian that has been able to produce another like me. There is not an educational institution, a social institution, a political institution, or an economic institution that has been able to produce another me. I am unique. I am peerless. I'm one of a kind self-proclaimed son of Yahweh, I know who I am. And when you find out who you are, you'll know who I am. Hey, Yahweh. And because I talk like this, do not think that I accuse you to my father, Yahweh. There's one that accuses you. Even the Old Testament, Moses. Huh? Even Moses accuses you whom you trust. But I know you have a problem with Moses. You have a serious problem with Moses. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. Why? Because Moses wrote about me. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 18 and see. Verse 15. Read. The Lord Yahweh, thy God, will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. Prophesy that one would be raised up just like Moses. Now, in order for one to be raised up just like Moses, Moses, the conditions of the people would have to be just like they were in the days of Moses. And what were the conditions of the people at the time of Moses? Bondage, servitude to another nation in another country. They needed deliverance. And it's written here, one would be born from among the children of Israel just like Moses, and you should listen to him. Now, from the day of Moses until this day, where is the slavery of Israel? You see? It hasn't happened until the black man of America has been brought here in these United States. 1900 years ago, during the time of Yahshua ben Yosef, there was no slavery. There's no record that he was a prophet. They claim he was the son, not a prophet. So between Moses and him was no prophet. And from 1900 years ago until this day, there's only been one group of people that's been put in slavery. And that's the black man of America. That being the case, you can't say Moses lied because here God said this in chapter 18 after Moses' deliverance saying one is going to be like Moses. Well, we have proof that no people have needed deliverance 
until the black man of America Sounds like somebody like Moses had to come here. Let's look at verse 18. Read. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Read the next verse. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak. Speak how? In my name. Check out how this man that's coming just like Moses. Check out in whose name he is going to speak. Not his own name. But in the Creator's name, woo, isn't this a heavy? I need to highlight my Bible. I have it underlined, but I need to highlight that. In, he will speak in my name. In whose name am I speaking? Can't deny it may upset you, but you can't deny it. You know, the truth is a, is a, is a mighty sword. It's a two-edged sword. It, it, it cuts going and coming. It'll make you jump, cut, and run when you don't have to go anywhere. It will. It'll get after you. It, it, it'll burn your brain. It heats you up. It will. It will. I just have to tell you like it is. I'm speaking in his name. And no one since Moses is calling and teaching the name Yahweh to a people that need deliverance. But me. But any preacher, any prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name. Now see, can, can you imagine me reading this scripture? Huh? Knowing that Yahweh is God and see these consequences. And be, pres and be presumptuous? I wouldn't have the nerve to be presumptuous not knowing this consequence right here. I mean, check out this. <laughs> Anybody huh, that presumed to speak to niggas in my name which I have not commanded him to speak or that shall speak in the name of other gods. Even that preacher, that prophet, that leader shall die. Now let's see if I'm right or wrong. Put it in an envelope. Seal it up and watch the fate of every leader on the earth that speak to my people in a name other than Yahweh and see if they don't die. Let's see. Praise Yahweh. See, sometimes we have to come on back, reach on back to the foundation. If, if, if sometimes we forget our foundation and I have to bring you back, take you back to the place where you first believe. Praise God. Now, it's only a, a man that believes in self-destruction that can read this scripture and then continue to teach a name other than Yahweh. Or be self-willed and presumptuous. I mean, can you imagine me presuming to speak in Yahweh's name? 
something he didn't command me to tell. Well, I mean, that's insane anybody do that. So I'm one of two things. Insane or I'm the one. <laughs> and my works testify of me. And I'm warning anybody else that has nerve to be presumptuous. Boy, are these some serious consequences? Huh? I said serious. You don't need me to explain how serious that is. Every leader you know in America that's teaching you, my people, the name of a God other than Yahweh shall die. I don't care how many people come to hear them speak. They shall die. I don't care how many people attend their services or their meetings, they shall die. Why? Because Yahweh says so. Yahweh of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob said so. You are special people, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. Is that First Peter? First Peter 2. Read. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And holy what? Nation. You're a nation. You're not Negroes. You're a nation. You're not colored. You're a holy people, a peculiar people. You are a royal priesthood. That's who you are. You are not a drug dealer. You are not a prostitute. You are not a thief and a robber. You are a royal priesthood. That's who you are. You are not just a nation, but a holy nation. That's who you are, black man of America. And all people that believe in the name Yahweh are the ones who become a part of our nation. I don't care what somebody told you that you are. You love Yahweh, you're part of our nation. But I have to come and tell the black men of America who you are. That reminds me of the scripture which says, who that has a hundred sheep and one of them is lost, Will he not leave the 99 and go and search after the one that is lost? And when he finds the one that is lost, will he not rejoice? So of all the nations that belong to me, of the 100 nations on this earth that belong to me, of the 100 nationalities that are mine, one is lost. It's not that I don't love the 99. It's I, they, they are safe in the knowledge of who they are. They are safe in the knowledge of their history and culture and language and name and land. They're safe in that knowledge. But there's a sheep that I have that is lost from all of this. And before I can rejoice, I have to leave the 99 nine alone in the safety of themselves and go after the one that doesn't know who he is. I have to go after the one that doesn't know his father. I have to go after the one that doesn't know his nationality. I have to go after the one that doesn't know his history. I have to go after my lost sheep that doesn't know his language. I have to go after my lost sheep that does not know his name, his place, his his destiny and upon finding you I rejoice and the whole world has to take notice that you which are redeemed from among our people in America you are indeed peculiar from the rest of them you indeed are royal in compared to those that haven't found their way to me yet but I'm still searching. 
I'm still traveling around, searching. Huh? I'm looking in the mountains, I'm looking in the valleys, I'm looking in the crevices, I'm looking under rocks, I'm looking in the ditches, I'm looking in the ravines, I'm even digging the dirt out, looking in the graveyard. I'm finding my sheep buried under 6,000 years of dirt. And the world has to marvel. <laughs> 